All right, <clears throat> an ultimate day, a twenty nine. Get to just get to work.
Hmm. I figure a lot of coins. That's a little concerning. Thanks, Foxy. <clears throat> there we go. 48. The big 48. The big four years, Foxy. The big four years. How are you doing today? <clears throat> Thanks for the four years. Oh. Off day. Oh, that's nice. Is that why you were on really late last night? Or early this morning? Oh wait, actually it might be two days ago now that I think about it. I've lost track of the day. One of the recent dates. 
I saw you on pretty late, actually. Okay. What are you gonna do with your day off? Any plans? <clears throat> Nonsense, the day just started. What are you gonna do with the lo remainder of the day then?
Mm-hmm. Today's warm up is a lot rougher than yesterday's. Yeah, we should stop there for the warm up. Silver. Howdy, howdy. <clears throat> Been pretty all right. Uh, which was. Kind of, push kind of hit the fan for a moment, I guess, when I woke up today. Went for a, uh, my usual one and a half miles. Washed up, ate some, ate a light breakfast, I guess. And, uh, here I am. What have you been up to? I know we just warmed up, or we did like the early routine anyways.
Work, work, I see. About the. Ooh, yeah. Get that feedback. Encouragement is always nice. Making someone happy is, uh. If there are, you know, top 10 things to really, uh, brighten someone's life is to make just the little things that matter to someone else. Chilling with some chocolate, though. All right, all right, real talk. Give me the details about the chocolate, you know? Are we, are we a cultured chocolate consumer, or are we just a, nah, just get into my belly kind of chocolate consumer? Oh, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. today for sure Oh, that's, yeah, that's a lot rougher today. Ooh. Bit low on energy. <clears throat> Don't matter. <clears throat> today is Tuesday. So we have a ninth week of Neverwinter to do. One more week to go for that thing.
We had quite a bit of dex drops there. Talking about MMOs, my buddy talked me interesting, finally caught up as of 60 and they all stopped. E, yeah, that can happen for sure, Silver. And yes, Foxy does, uh, wow, continues to. Okay. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh I mean it it it's just warm up, so I'm no longer going for like Yeah, it happens a lot. Uh I have a it looks like my dexterity isn't very very uh very unpointed at the moment. Yeah. I think that's where we're going today, but we must attempt to get our reps in. We're dropping, Also, uh, today I'm not 
having my uh, usual midday caffeine. See where the dexterity is without um without it. <sighs> yeah, Twitch has not been, uh, today has been a little rough for Twitch, so, um, you're gonna have to bear w with it, probably. Uh, when I woke up, Twitch was completely bored, like, it was the odd, uh, the... 
uh, the, what you call it, um, the site itself was completely bored. Um, some, some sites stated, uh, Twitch hadn't released a, um, released a, uh, statement about the 30 minute outage, like complete outage. And then now I'm guessing they're doing some back end stuff just to check. Yeah, Foxy's a promiscuous one. Maybe <laughs> Twitch forgot his caffeine too. Ah, uh, the Pally player. <laughs> silver is silver is around my age, Foxy. We share we share some commonality with a vanilla life. One of my keycaps fell off <laughs> just now. Uh oh, it's it's kind of loose. The keycap. It's loose.
Yikes. A keycap falling off really, really worried me. Did I break it? Oh, yeah, it's definitely looser than the other one. Uh oh. <laughs> I think after three and a half years, this ski cap is finally done, though. Hold up. <laughs> the, the left, the left key cap is like a lot looser now. It's finally gived. It's just some 3D printed thing anyways. No, not much to... I don't think I have spare keycaps. But it's alright. It's not my keyboard, by the way. I don't, I don't uh, tap on the keyboard. It's just a two-button keypad. keypad. Yeah, yeah, it... Um, when I started with, uh, on Osu, there was a specific person who really wanted me to try this keypad out. So they, uh, were very generous and threw me the money for the keypad. So then I purchased it and I haven't gotten something new. It's the same, th those are the same switches too. They're still linear Cherry MX red switches in them. In general, an OSU player would have gone through switches like once a year if they played regularly. I'm a very light tapper. Like, exceptionally light. But you know, even, even the 3D printed keycaps. <laughs> have their limitations. Although I do have to admit, in these last 30 days, I probably tap way more than I did the last three years. Like, in total.
systematically too fast, but it's alright. Oh, that restart though. Here at Space Room, people are spending absolute bank to get that one performance increase. You know, if you, if you get to the end, right? If you, uh, get to that status, that, uh, diminished return, it will absolutely often, to a pragmatic person, will feel like diminished return. That's when willpower, passion, and spirit starts flooding in. To fill the, gra the gaps of pragmatism. Uh, there's a bigger hardware meta than you may you may think, and that specific hardware meta in this case is felt in other genres as well, especially shooters. And what I mean is the actual, like the thing that's involved, is actually a current talking point. Like there's an actual product that's involved. As opposed to like a nebulous finding more hardware thing. There's an actual manufa specific manufacturer, keyboard manufacturer that is uh, if you look up the Wooting HE and then just like read reddits and stuff regarding uh Rapid trigger, a rapid trigger offset for uh, actuating keys. That's that's uh, something that's felt in very specific genre, which uh, Osu is one of them. But it also uh, flows into FPSs, a lot of FPSs or shooters in general. It's pretty interesting, uh, the technology too, just like figuring out how, th how this impacts and it gives you a lens into what the, what the majority of players are actually doing or on their switches as opposed to what they think they're doing on their switches. It's really expensive. I mean, it would be cool if they made a, uh... I have, Foxy. Not just a... It's not... Uh, it's an AI first. It's not an Osu AI streamer. It's just an AI that is going around using the AI to play things, and Osu just happens to be one of them. And the AI is being is used to masquerade as a VTuber. Yeah.
Ah, oh, boy. Yikes. Yeah. That's both a stamina and a dexterity. Oh. Issue. I can't. Ugh. That sounds pretty insane to you. It's all right. Um, you kind of get you kind of get in the headspace of understanding that stuff when you under um if you get involved in how machine learning and AI works. It was eventually going to um, propagate to live streaming services at some point. Uh, the tech is somewhat more uh, approachable now than it was four or five years ago. The early days of uh, using machine learning, I was still actually working on my PhD at the time. It does create a lot of ethical concerns so, and conflict of interest. Something that uh, the world is, uh, the world as a whole. A different industry is uh, tackling at the moment in their own different ways like the art community the music community and, the... and more or less the streaming community at this point it just recently kind of showed up in the streaming community so um, not enough to feel the ramifications at the moment like the conflicts of interest uh, the first one that was greatly impacted right now and they're having dialogues and stuff on how to either segregate, compromise, how to do that would be the actually the music industry. But the music industry was well earlier. And then now the art industry is currently in like the center stage. But eventually you'll see this this type of stuff be adapted and permeate throughout and um, policies and compromises and how to distinguish between li uh, like humans and AI would be going to be a talking topic for the next coming years. Oh, yeah. Just can't get to the end of it. And I'm having like timing issues because of dexterity. We'll play this for a little bit. Maybe halfway. I am 
so early. Mm, maybe not. We'll, uh, we'll stroll down the speed today. Just to, uh, hopefully, uh, remind ourselves what the timing is. Because the timing is really off. I'm having, I'm having, unless I really did break my switch. <laughs> Keep strolling down. Yeah, and our uh, session lighter today.
Oh, caffeine definitely helped steady my hand quite quite a bit. Not it doesn't improve my stamina ratio, but it definitely steadies my hand quite a bit. In order for me to get to learn learn the muscle memory, the mind body correction. Um, AI and machine learning is a topic that I've been working on for a while now. So, um, when I mean a topic, I mean just the rationales, the pragmatism, the compromising and whatnot. So I haven't really gotten to ironing out how to frame that. But what I can say is that I am generally someone who adapt to the changing tides so I am not a stranger to integrating whatever methods and ways of improving my productivity so I am not unfamiliar with using the tools that are available now and generating more stuff I've been doing some moonlighting on my own and seeing how uh, I can use most of that to dramatically increase my uh, achieving goals that I would want to achieve. However, um, I don't reflect. I don't reflect the majority of people. So, any form of machine learning or AI that is infiltrating an industry that takes time to reform and adjust to it. It doesn't account for the accountability of dramatically moving forward an industry by leaving the majority of its interesting interested parties behind. So whether they are aware of how it's more or less disrupting the current status quo, right? This current uh, appeal of productivity. The individuals, the vast majorities, will be piqued by this interest, and they would support a system that is naturally in conflict of in, in conflict with its own interests. So, from someone who stands back and tend to look at the prospect, uh, perspective outcomes and the influences. Generally speaking, being enamored and being interested in a tech that effectively replaces the people who are enjoying it comes with a requirement of larger people, people who are looking at the bigger picture. Those who are living in a moment may become enthusiastic and support something that will legitimately take away from their quality of life and their ability to be productive. So those individuals are going to be, which is the vast majority of people who are working within an industry, will be playing, will be at a disadvantage quite a bit. And it's not because they don't work hard. It's largely because of their the scope of their attention and the scope of their ability to realize the bigger picture. Our workers are admirable in that way because you can tend to rely on them to unapologetically put in fourth time. But uh, without stepping back and looking at the bigger um, perspective, in my opinion, individuals who have the bigger perspective, there's some responsibility and accountability for them to show compassion and conscientiousness to see the development of technology and how it may impact real pe the humans that are involved in it. And that's the dialogue that's being, being especially accented right now in uh, AI art. It's the most politically ambiguous I could be about the current topic. And, you know, there are like three, four, five dominant opinion, uh, platforms for it. 
and what this, uh, what the thing that Foxy's referring to is the first individual to opportunistically capitalize on the application of machine learning and AI. But the downside, the con the inherent truth is the existence of that channel. It's a conflict of interest. And we know from historical events that historically, Twitch as an organization takes quite a lot of time to deliberate about this. So the question is, the reactions and the compromising and stuff, how late? It's not more of when it will be addressed, it's more like how late the reform is going to be about the policy between distinguishing between the two. In no way does this mean that person has accountability for what the person is doing. It's fair game because there aren't any policies in place. So, although I have my suspicions about other type of misbehaviors regarding that type of thing, but um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting. It's not big, it's an isolated event and it's a case study right now. So um, it's not enough to garner the attention of a large organization yet. Uh, AI art has existed for a while. It's just when it reaches a critical mass in which it is approachable and accessible to many people, you know, to a significant population, that's when the policies and stuff is felt and it comes in as a reaction reaction to it. I don't know when that is for live streaming, but uh, I'm already brainstorming about the political and moral and ethical implications and this is the beginning of it um i i would say as a disclaimer it's not very important to me it's not important to me at the moment because i don't have a career or career trajectory or con a, a lucrative conflict of interest however um i like to inform myself about these things so that I can understand if I were to take up the opportunity. Like for example, if someone approached me today, right now, with a deal about this, I would have to strongly understand the landscape is going to change immediately with the progress of AI. And you have to understand these things. Or at least for me. I am compulsory. I find this compulsorily necessary in order to enter any industry or expect to be a professional in an industry. I have to know the bigger picture, in my opinion, in order to be successful in it. Did you when they put a TikTok filter that does AI anime filters? That's a little. That's. A very loose example of one of the things. This is more like um, an AI filter is more like a pattern recognition thing. Uh, pattern recognition is not machine learning. Or what I mean is it's a set pattern recognition. So like recognize a face it's like all right well it's seeded with recognizing face. We're talking about technology now where it it does not behave the same as time goes on. That's the difference. The content, like if you put an anime filter, that anime filter will not dynamically change over time by observing and responding and taking account to its interactions. AI, on the other hand, does with machine learning, where imagine if you had to you bootstrap this AI anime filter, right? But the filter is gonna change and keep on changing based on the feedback and filter uh, 
based on the feedback and trends it's collecting from its data sets. So if it so if its data set is for example tracking what is the hottest characteristics of anime persona online it will automatically learn to to hyper statistically modify each part of the anime filter the character to uh adhere to biggest trends for example and it would do that because it learned from the data set so it's constantly getting an updated data set that will continue to automatically choose and learn what the characteristics of anime filter is <laughs> that's that's the concern but uh you know that's a very reductive way of looking at it you know what i mean like what if you yourself i'm not saying this is in the near future or something what if an extension of you is your ai partner so like you as a professional is not just you it's you and your avatar you and your backup the other you so all this stuff is being like kind of adjusted like how how do we ascribe credit and you know and whatnot so it's a really interesting topic but i haven't really uh fleshed out all the details yet so i'm kind of hitting on various points and whatnot but not really in a systematic way. It takes a while to uh, sort out all these thoughts. I don't think I can do this. So let's uh, let's cool down. Let's cool down. I've already started implementing workflows that include uh, include um, machine learning and AI into my workflow. Last day, we're gonna pump some. We're gonna get some caffeine. Last day. Tomorrow being the last day. Like for example, uh, I am a big proponent of not null hypothesis testing. So when you have a convention, when you've understood something to be true, again, AI to do all its greatest attempts to counter argue you. Since it's the AI working for you, you're only strengthening your, your arguments by having something constantly challenging you, right? So when it time comes, when in a, a human person comes to rebuttal my statement, and can that human really be more vigilant than me uh, rebuttaling myself with an AI trained partner? Who knows? It certainly wouldn't weaken my overall understanding of a topic so that's a very a pragmatic way of applying ai technology to strengthen and 
uh, reinforce my abilities as opposed to having a conflict of interest per se. Although, with that said, it, you another person could use and train an AI to rebuttal my point, right? So then now it would be a conflict of interest. So what you can do within yourself, with yourself, it can also be used to stir the pot and create conflicts of interest. So we'll see about that. I don't know how they're gonna, how the big, big dudes are gonna, you know, <laughs> distribute policies, but I look forward to it. I'm not a policy maker and I rarely dab in policy making what they have to deal and what they have to account for. So it'll be interesting just to see what happens and then reflect on it. I've already seen some of some examples of bad actors and then some examples of pragmatism. A lot of examples of ignorance, uh, ignorant opportunism, which may or may not hurt them in the long run, but ignorance opportunism tends to provide a lot of success for someone immediately without the consequences of expecting that they're going to be set they're going to be having an uphill battle with like morality and ethical concerns since ethics and morality like ethics in general require policy and enforcement a negotiation, you know, like standardization among a uh, big or now it's like the Wild West. Still. Less so for certain things that got tackled earlier, but uh, more so for current things that are being affected now. Once it resonates with once it resonates to a bigger uh, bigger audience then we will probably see how it irons out. And then I can probably make a comment about it. Uh, it's very underdeveloped, my idea about it.
Oh. Oh. Today is rough. Today is very rough. Already been an hour and a half. All right. One of the earliest uh, applications of this conflict of interest or to test and self-test human capacity is in gaming actually. One could call it the second to the third. Um, I believe he, the human condition is cyclic, right? So over 10 years ago, if you remember, StarCraft players, including chess players, were challenged by underbaked logical systems. But now you can think of this new iteration as the next cycle. Now technology has realized a more natural way of elevating that challenge and it was a big spectacle back then and it could still be a big spectacle now for in individuals who have conflict of interest with it like the fear of being replaced right the job what you in order to offset that right how do you prep for this potential influx well you focus on inherently accenting what humans can do and what machines can't do, right? So you can prep for that if you want and gamble on the idea that there wouldn't be policy that favors you to continue developing a skill that can more or less be superseded by something that's far more efficient. So what can you do on that? Well, let's just say there are per particular professions that are still relatively safe 
when it comes to human interactions, right? Like communication, public speaking, motivational speaking, that type of thing. So those are the elements that if you're in a particular industry that can be automated and be augmented by machine learning, you have to elevate the other elements of you to imbue that personalized. If you're an entertainer in any way, if you're an entertainer in any way, you must emphasize the human element and imbue it into your skill set, right? In order to differentiate. So that, in a way, is a safe way to kind of future proof your attractiveness because. Who knows? AI could be end up being banned or like being relegated or segregated completely, or it can be embraced and augmented and stuff. So you can choose to use that to keep that open. You must also elevate your human elements. Your human elements will safeguard and differentiate between the value of a human skilled person and a machine learning person, right?、Uh, that gap can close in the future for sure. But what I'm Suggesting is you can still promote your job, your skill sets, but you must also elevate the thing that distinguishes you from what machine learning can do right now, which is basically take yourself away from pragmatism as much as possible to entertain the all the slew of things you can offer as a non-practical machine, right? As machines operate on efficiency patterns, trends, what humans can still do irrationally is to make non-trending decisions, to elevate new ideas and generate novelty, right? And this all still flows with what I said yesterday about selective success and how, when there's a normalization, what happens is normalization can lead to great efficiency. But also, this fits into the picture. My introduction and curiosity about the place of AI machine learning deals with what I was talking about yesterday regarding emotional intelligence. One of the most defining features will make you still stand out in an industry of being a public figure and whatnot. So, to me, I would make a disclaimer: I'm not concerned. But the not that's like not representative of most people. My skills just happens to be something that is a bit further away, like just by coincidence, sheer luck that what I do well happens to be not being tri- like in conflict with integration of machine learning. But that's being cold and being selfish. The bigger perspective is that the majority of people have skills that can be superseded by procedural, procedurally more efficient way of automation, and it can be very detrimental. So、um, I'm been following the politics the first time around, which was with music. Then the second time around, which is now the artwork. Actually, way before that, there was a little bit of a stent about video games, like or game in general, like be it chess or something like that. Way, way back, but it was in its infancy. Machine learning was still. It didn't quite learn anything. It was just, it was able to bootstrap most efficient solutions within a closed system. Machine learning this time around is in an. It's still within a closed system based on data sets, but that closed system can dynamically lead to wider applications. So it's getting closer. So now we're in the second coming of the second coming of technology.
Uh, oh, you're a, I see. I don't know. I don't know. You're gonna, I, I don't specialize in many things. So it's up to your ingenuity to find non-overlapping tasks. Um, I had a thought. And I lost it. it. It'll probably come back to me. I haven't really... Yeah, it's still tons of ideas here and there. I have to kind of arrange it in a way that is a little bit more cohesive. But yeah, if you're wondering, like I know uh, the, I'm going to say the vast majority of individuals do not concern themselves with such things at the moment but because of that lack of concern there is a vast underestimation of the capacity of what I'm talking about right now to the point that a content creator can be completely supplanted as a form of revenue completely automated by an operator I don't specialize in doing these things. However, in practice, it's so accessible now that it has become an ethical problem. For a long time, there are individuals who have utilized this to great effect, but they focused on like the pragmatic side, the the stuff that doesn't quite create a bunch of conflict of interest. But the capacity of how accessible it is now... I can't begin to describe to you that... Everything I say now, like what I have said, how I sound... One thing that is done really well... Is that you can imitate pragmatism extremely well. So, if you're a belligerent, narcissist, who triggers everyone, you're safe. You're good to go. Like, that's the most human you can be. But for someone like myself, if you are catering towards pragmatism and efficiency, you are easily replaced by machine learning. They operate by that, you know what I mean? So... When an, if you're asking like my digressions, like my four hour digressions, that can be generated. Because often the, the most agreeable way of approaching something is to see if there's data for it. So if there isn't data for it, you simply say there's not enough sufficient data to create an opinion or to create a conclusion at the moment and that is something I could read off a script and it would probably sound like me so the more pragmatic you are the less the less human you want to be so the more professional you want to be as an adhering and conscientious to trends and patterns the more likely you are at risk of conflict of interest with a machine learning dominant industry. So the idea, understanding this fundamental principle among like 10 or 12 more I'm entertaining is that I can utilize it to replace me and then focus on my humanity. If you know what I mean. So, legit, if it is my brand that makes me sound like a machine learning AI, I might as well replace myself with that part. And it's my brand, so it's not like it will increase my efficiency. And what else can I do in the process? Well, develop my other human skills that have been underdeveloped because of pragmatism. That's kind of my working theory right now, how, how I would move forward without, 
you know, without stepping on people's toes and stuff. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want you to be playing that. Well, actually, uh, I'm pretty sure that's that's DMCA, but it's fine. Um, all right, all right. Anyways, anyways, uh, we're going to end our practice here. And uh, tomorrow's the last day. I hope I can get up to um, hmm, the last day. So I hope I can get up to here. I didn't actually finish this today, right? Yeah, I tried twice. I didn't think. If we secure this, we're gonna try really hard tomorrow, like super hard. Like leave it, leave our blood, sweat, and heart on it. So we're gonna complete everything except this, hopefully, or try really, really hard. And then we're gonna at least try to get up there. And try our darndest. And then, uh... It'll wrap up the 30 days. So anyways. Until tomorrow. <laughs>